I think if you look at Mesquite and the need for a good quality of life, you look at the Art Center and it is something that most communities do not have. And so it delivered on providing a better quality of life for the community. And I think that's one of the biggest achievements of having uh, the Mesquite Art Center uh, where it is now. I call this Mesquite Art Center a multi-purpose building because it is used for so many things. We um, use it for weddings, special events, art display shows here in the uh, lobby area, and it's also used as the black box theater. Initial reaction, I, I couldn't believe it. I was just, you know, I had worked in a black box before and I was so excited to be able to do it again because it allows you so much more flexibility. We had all the things that are necessary to come in, unwrap an instrument, and just become part of a group. That's what the Art Center gave us, was good credentials. This hall is very live. That is very good for the symphony. I think all of us who were paid professionals truly embarked on a, on a journey that was about the art and not that we could direct any of that. What does the future hold for the Mesquite Art Center? Well, in order for us to move forward, we have to look at our past and understand our past and what the art center gave us and how it was developed so that through the generations, through the 25 years that we are celebrating today, um, we understand how we got here. I'm Eric Guajardo and I am the assistant manager at the Mesquite Art Center. In 2018, myself and Con Drennan were brought on to the Mesquite City staff to bring new life to the Mesquite Art Center. I really had a drive on how I could help and being a public servant for the City of Mesquite, I felt kind of special because I had a background in graphics. So I feel like I actually got to meet and understand those that I'm helping within the community. The Mesquite Arts Center is half city work and half nonprofit work. I got to really focus and learn how each department within the city could be involved within the Mesquite Arts Center. Me and Khan sit on the board of the Mesquite Arts Council. The Mesquite Arts Council was established in 1984. It's a nonprofit organization that assists the city of Mesquite with helping the residents of the Mesquite Arts Center. My name is Mike Templeton and I am, or was until I retired in 2014, the first managing director of the Mesquite Arts Council. And after we opened this facility in December 1995, became its manager. Prior to 2018, our predecessors did a wonderful job. They engaged in the community and they helped um, with the organizations here, um, such as the symphony, band, and theater. My name is Cecilia Riggle. I am a charter member of the Mesquite Community Band. I've been on the board of directors most of that time and I'm just a lover of the arts and I play clarinet in the band since April the 6th, 1986. The band is always going to be the band and it's, it's a wonderful organization that's had a, a couple of directors and so they've been a, an integral part of this facility, very important backbone if you will. And the community theater as well has been, was founded in the 80s and they too uh, continue to produce quality work. My name is Scott Croy. I am currently treasurer of the Mesquite Arts Theater. I've been involved with the Mesquite Arts Theater since 1993. I've been a producer, director, set designer, lighting designer. Uh, just anything, any hat you can wear as far as the theater goes, I've worn it. Um, I've been around a long time and I'm very, very happy that we have the Mesquite Arts Center that we can call home. The Symphony Orchestra was founded 
right before this building was completed. In fact, it was in the early 90s, maybe late 80s. My name is Robert Vornado. I'm the current president of the board, the Mesquite Symphony Orchestra Association Board. I was a charter member in 1986 of the symphony. I was a stage manager, equipment manager for seven years. Since working on this project, I learned a lot about the Mesquite Art Center that I had no clue of. We learned that the Mesquite Independent School District and the city actually helped fund this facility. I'm Cliff Kahili. I'm city manager for the city of Mesquite, and I have been affiliated with the Art Center for 25 years. When I started with the city of Mesquite, uh, they were halfway through construction of the Art Center and there was just this general great feeling in the community uh, that they had accomplished something that they had wanted for so long. We learned that through the history, this wasn't only a home for the Mesquite Symphony Orchestra, the band, the theater. It was the home of the Texas area artists and the debutantes and the choirs and many other Mesquite organizations. They're all volunteer but it's just giving from the heart to make the arts accessible in our community. And you have to have that if you're going to have a successful program. There's a lot of legacy here. You know, Con and I walk through these hallways and we see the writings on the walls of people's names and legacies left behind, the bricks in the courtyard, the very subtle engraving into the stone. What we don't understand is why and how those items got here, because we weren't around. very happy to. As you know that we started uh, construction August 29th, 1994 and it is now uh, middle August uh, 1995. Well it started back in about 1984 when um, several people came together. At the time it wasn't certain that it would be an art center but there were strong voices thankfully who guided the community and the city council and the mayor at the time Brunhild Nystrom into considering that this would be an art center. And with their work and all of the things that they accomplished and the people they talked to and the, and the fight in the community and the building up of the Arts Council itself, um, we were able to get that bond issue of $3 million passed in around 1984. Mayor Venner came into the scene early on as well. He was, he was very much a supporter of the arts in Mesquite. I'm George Venner. I'm on the board of directors here at the Mesquite Arts Center. I was the mayor here for a little over four years, and I've always had an interest in the arts in Mesquite. We started looking for a place to have all of these 15 different arts groups in Mesquite meeting place. And unfortunately, most of them were meeting in their homes or in their garage, and the records were very poor. Yeah, before the Art Center was built, we used to be in a variety of locations. It was kind of wherever we could find a spot that somebody would allow us to perform. We performed in a Fellowship Hall of a, of a church over off of Town East Boulevard for a while. We had a storefront that we were allowed to use for a while until the air conditioning system went out. We were even did some shows in, at the Social Service Building. And one production was actually in the drama room at Mesquite High School. The orchestra started in the spring of 1986 and our first rehearsals were at West Mesquite High School and our first concert in September of that year was at Eastfield College and we rehearsed at Eastfield College for the next seven or eight years and did all of our performances there. We performed at the Country Church at that time and then East Ridge Park Christian Church is where we gave performances. They were very small venues, so we had to be very careful how loud we played. And then eventually, they kept talking to us about the Art Center was gonna be built, it was going to be built, and it really was. The previous mayor before me, Brunhilde Nystrom, 
she had an interest in the arts and also Jean Weisenbaker. She was a real favorable person to the arts and did so much to help us get it started. Jean and Ralph were just this uh, amazing pair and they, uh, they moved to Mesquite and became involved. They were looking for ways to improve the community and just found uh, that the arts were something special to them and they gave uh, a great amount of time, uh, money, um, and their voice. And uh, Jean was uh, a considerable force in this community. She uh, could show up and serve on a committee and get something done. And uh, it was always impressive to see just her energy and uh, commitment to making things better. In 1990, Mayor Venner convinced the council through Gene Weisenbaker's insistence that they find a property, a facility, or land. And it was decided that the hospital that sat next door to the municipal center, which exists now at 1515 North Galloway, would be a perfect place. Through some pretty good negotiating, the city bought this property for $200,000, which included a little over three acres. And because of that, wonderful collaboration and partnership, we were able to, by the end of the year, 1992, have submitted names of architects uh, to the city, and they hired Milton Powell and Partners late 1992 to be the architects for this facility. Milton Powell had done uh, a couple of other projects uh, since the Art Center, so I, I knew Milton and his team uh, very well, and uh, they just have a uh, just a sense of design uh, that kind of just fit for Mesquite. It was uh, uh, taking this old building and renovating it and then adding this new part on and having a concert hall that looks like it does was just an exceptional uh, achievement for the architect. The uh, relationship between the uh, Arts Council and the elected officials and just the community uh, was one of a combined spirit. Uh, the Arts Council had a really uh, strong desire to bring something to Mesquite and then the City Council um, putting forth the uh, effort to purchase the property uh, to help fund and oversee construction and then the, the response from the community was, uh, uh, was overwhelming. We had a person with the city named Gary Moore. He watched over the uh, construction, everything in here, and helped us along the way. This room specifically, um, Poteet High School does not have any kind of, uh, any kind of arts facility currently there. Putting all this thing together was really a task. And as I said, there's been lots of people that made a lot of contributions on it, but I'd say Mike Templeton was as important as anybody because he worked at it, he was knowledgeable in the arts, and uh, he, he just did a tremendous job uh, piecemealing this thing together and keeping everybody, you know, working on it. It was a joint effort by, as I say, the city, but Mike was, I'd say, the lead person on it. All of the walls were created, especially for this concert hall and the, and the rehearsal hall, on site huge slabs of concrete laid out on the on the ground and cured and then they were lifted up with cranes so it was a slab basically a slab building like what you would see in a warehouse There were concepts and artistic expressions that we wanted to make sure could exist, including a reverberation for voice, uh, the need that there wouldn't have to be uh, microphones to uh, broadcast or to amplify the music or anything like that. One of the biggest persons who had an input on it was our former director, Dale Coates. He was with us for 20 years, so he was very instrumental in saying, the band needs this for sound, 
this not for sale, we need this much space, and they listened to everything he had to say. There were a lot of folks involved, uh, both from our organization, the band, and the theater, the civic chorus, and all of those folks. Everyone knew what was going on. Everyone was looking forward to having their own little cubby hole uh, and office here in this building. I remember being at, at a couple of the board meetings where Mike Templeton was talking to us about kind of what we needed as far as the space goes, as far as like lighting things that we needed, all of those, all of those various aspects of it. And he was keeping us apprised of how it was going and, you know, asked us if we could, um, you know, to help with some fundraising activities, et cetera. And this area in the courtyard had not been put in yet. So there was still quite a bit of mess out there. And then they figured out a way to finance that was to sell the pavers. So everybody and anybody who could jumped in and bought a paver and put their name out there so we could get this courtyard to be part of the arts. We also insisted on having there be at least a small gallery, which there is, but not a, not a huge space, but a, a fairly presentable place for, for artists. All of those aesthetics were collaborative and Milton Powell and partners were very much in tune to the, com to the community in creating uh, committees to express what, what people wanted to see in the building and a lot of the community was able to come together and describe those sorts of things. So I guess in terms of the construction, it took a while We are hoping to see construction complete November 1st. That's when the Arts Council of the City of Mesquite will take over keys and uh, move equipment into the building. It has been a long process. It's been a wet year. It's been all kinds of uh, strange weather. El Nino, as you recall, is over with this year. They're expecting to have at least a, uh, a good snowstorm. Um, so I believe that if all goes well, we've got most of the bad weather behind us and can uh, really see fast progress with regard to the construction and the uh, general contractor's workload. Um, if that's the case, uh, uh, and we again believe that it will be, uh, then moving in November 1st will give us plenty of time for the uh, December 2nd start of the gala celebration, which will go for 15 days through December 17th. That includes MISD, uh, performing arts groups, Eastfield performing arts groups, certainly the nonprofits in the city of Mesquite, as well as the Dallas Chamber Orchestra, the uh, Texas Baroque Ensemble, Texas Area Artists, uh, Mesquite Creative Arts Club. Many people are involved in this, in this gala extravaganza. Just before the doors opened and when the equipment was in place and everybody expected to have all of it set up when they arrived. I could come in here at night and no one be here and I could sit in that audience and pretend. And that's what it was like. It was just breath catching. Um, and I did that several times. It was that emotional. We were hoping to have the grand opening and did have the grand opening uh, that first, second week, I think, of December 1995. The, the interesting thing about it is that we involved the churches, we involved the schools, we involved the local arts groups who were nonprofits at the time. We did have um, renowned Dallas organizations, Dallas Box Society. Susan Frey was in charge of that and she came and did, had that group on original instruments do uh, Handel's Messiah with a, with a chorus. We had, um, the community theater doing excerpts from the play they were producing as their first production in the Black Box Theater. Our first show here was Crimes of the Heart by Beth Henley, um, and we built a house. Uh, you have to build like a living room and a kitchen set, including a functional, almost functional oven and a sink with running water. We ran a hose from the sink to the shop sink in the back just so that we could get the running water going. The opening weekend that the, the Art Center opened 
we were doing kind of like a little preview of that particular show. So we would do like a little 20 minute bit of it and then we would wait about 40 minutes and then another small group of people would come in and we would do that same bit. We were the first group who played on the concert hall stage in December when it opened in 1995. Very first. We filled up all 492 seats. It was fabulous. As it was, we were here during the day and then in the evening trying to host different events and and different receptions for those that were here. Um, so it was really kind of exhausting, but a wonderful experience. I think the community had a great response to the, uh, to the center uh, with the different types of programming that uh, occur here. You have the school district that uses it not only for uh, performances, but they've done trainings here. Uh, the different arts uh, groups in the community have invited other arts groups to Mesquite as well. Initial reaction, I, I couldn't believe it. I had worked in a black box before and I was so excited to be able to do it again because it allows you so much more flexibility. It was a little different because we had never really had a place to call home. And now, and once the art center was built, we did. And it, it just, it, it sort of changed our whole way of, of doing things because we would we were struggling to find shows where you could do a very simple set that you could put up and take down and you couldn't do anything complicated like a two-story set that you were would, or a rotating set both of which we have done here it just being here made all the difference in the world as far as us being able to expand our show selection we had all the things that are necessary to come in unwrap an instrument and just become part of a group that's what the art center gave us was good credentials. It created a sense for them of more professionalism and it gave them an idea that they could increase their perceptions because they were in this professional facility and I think they appreciated that. Yeah I would say as far as the productions going from when we were doing things in whatever space we could find till now is you can create a, a real, what looks like a real space, you can create a real house. So it allowed us to sort of take it to the next level as opposed to being sort of like a junior high production, we moved to almost the professional level. Lots of wonderful things happened as a result of people like Gene Weisenbaker and Diane Wright and George Benner and Brunhilde Nystrom and so many wonderful people. Just the kinds of programming that existed and the artists that we became friends with, as well as the, uh, the singers and the instrumentalists and the, the, the literary programming that existed. We were able to, to receive grants from the National Endowment for the Arts for some um, literary programming uh, that was pretty significant, I think, community-wide, and that's what we attempted to accomplish. Obviously, when it opened, there was huge interest, full houses for two or three years, um, incredible events were taking place. Um, after that, of course, the audiences diminished a little bit. And uh, then they picked up, and then they diminished, and so it was always a struggle just to make sure that we could keep, with limited funding, some sort of a marketing effort going, uh, so that people would know that what was happening here was important for them, but also important as a statement for the community. Um, and then when I retired, um, I, th I think there was a little bit of a struggle uh, to find its place again, but that wasn't very long in passing. There's a notion about the place again and an understanding of its purpose. Facility-wise, we're in good shape and that uh, we can offer just about any kind of service through here, where there's a luncheon, it's a symphony, a club meeting, a training program. So the Art Center is set up to do what it's doing. It's providing a service to the city of Mesquite. I think if you look at the ability to provide arts programming for the new members of Mesquite and the new kids that are uh, growing up here, 
and the way that the programming has changed over the years to really try to impact the new residents that are coming to Mesquite. I think that's uh, another uh, big part of what this center does for Mesquite and the Mesquite community. When Con and I came in 2018, we wanted to make sure that we stayed true to what they established, but just pumped it up a little bit more. With the help of experts and professionals, we opened up the Mesquite Art Center's YouTube channel. We we're able to broaden our educational resources so that now you can learn about digital art, you can learn about production. We could offer dance opportunities and poetry, spoken word. The resources and the knowledge is unlimited and we have only started to tap onto what we could offer our community in Mesquite and beyond Mesquite. We would like to make sure that we incorporate the past and the present and mesh it together so that it becomes its own little creation. The center has changed a lot in 25 years. Uh, it's improved. Uh, we have a wider variety of things to offer and um, it's just grown with those things as the city has grown. It is home and I hope the next 25 years are as beautiful and as fulfilling and as forward moving as the last 25 have been. You know, over 25 years we've seen uh, the uh, evolution of the different types of art programming, um, but the center was so versatile that we saw a lot of different things early on that we still see today. I, th I think all of us who were paid professionals truly embarked on a, on a journey that was about the art and not that we could direct any of that. If we could enhance anything, it was being a a communicator, someone who could stand back and let the art speak for itself. Pray.